Hello, everyone. My name is Angela Osterreicher. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about impact factors, and I'm from the WRJ Virtual Library. Just wanted to give you the context of this webinar. It came up as a follow-up to a webinar I did a se several months ago called Where Do I Publish? Uh, in that webinar, I mentioned several times uh, it's a good idea to publish in a reputable journal or a high-impact journal. And I kind of realized that the audience perhaps didn't really understand what that meant or how exactly you go about doing that. So that's how the uh, this webinar was uh, envisioned, that we will look at the journal-level impact. A little bit of housekeeping first, though. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and put on our YouTube site. Uh, it'll probably be up in a couple of days. Uh, we'll send out a deck slide. Of, a deck slide will be mailed to all those who have registered for the session. And if you have any questions, just put them in the chat box. I'll do my best to try to monitor that as we go through. So the objectives for today, I'm hoping to ensure that uh, you have an understanding what an impact factor is and how it came to be, a bit of a history, uh, how an impact factor is calculated and what it means, where do you find impact factors, and using journal metrics responsibly. So to begin with a bit of a background, I'm just throwing out this number maybe for the past 100 years or so, librarians and information scientists have been evaluating the quality of journals. Very early on, individuals or groups would create lists of recommended journals, but it was felt that they were too biased as they were based on personal or group opinion. So in an effort to create unbiased measures of journal quality, various statistical methods were applied. As this work progressed, it eventually, the term bibliometrics was coined. It's the use of statistical methods to analyze books, articles, and other publications. Bibliometric, bibliometric methods are used in my field, library and information science, to analyze or trace the relationship among academic journal citations. Citation analysis is just one bibliometric application. Now, a subfield of bibliometrics is scientometrics, and that's simply bibliometrics applied to the analyzing of scientific publications. So an early pioneer in the field of bibliometrics was Eugene Garfield who in around 1955 coined the terms or, or first mentioned citation metrics. And the whole purpose of the citation metric was primarily intended for librarians to use to make purchasing decisions and to identify publishing venues for authors. So the premise is of journal impact or impact factors, the premise is, is that the value of a journal can be measured by the number of times its use is formalized in the form of a citation. So this eventually led to the ranking, to journal rankings, which are based on citation frequency, which were eventually recorded in what was is known as the Science Citation Index around about 1961. The scientists, this citation index, along with the arrival of computers, led to computer-compiled statistical reporting on the output of journals and also citation frequency. So journal impact factor was born. Thomson Reuters, began uh, at this point, Thomson Reuters took over and uh, began publishing the impact factor in what is known as the journal citation reports. The journal citation reports are a database that provides bibliometric analysis of journals in science and technology, as well as social sciences. 
and the citation data comes from the Web of Science database. Today, Clarivet Analytics calculates journal impact factor and publishes the journal citation reports annually. You can get the journal impact factor from the database Journal of Citation Reports directly, or you can access it via the Web of Science. So this is the formula for calculating the impact factor for a journal. The impact factor stated is calculated annually as the mean number of citations to articles published in any given journal in the two preceding years. As an example, the 2019 impact factor for journal X is calculated as the number of citations in 2019 to all items published in 2017 to 2018 over the number of articles and reviews published in 2017 to 2018. So if the numerator is 200 and the denominator is 100, then the impact factor for this journal X would be two. A journal impact factor of two means that on average, the articles published two years ago have been cited two times. So in general, the higher impact factor journals in a given field are perceived to be more prestigious than other titles. So I'd like to point out that in the numerator, JCR takes the citation received for all document types. So articles, reviews, could be letters, editorials, meeting abstracts, whereas the denominator, they're only looking at articles and reviews and proceedings. So this is a consideration that you need to keep in mind. Uh, in some cases, uh, some people say it's a criticism or a caveat. Uh, editorial, with the editorials and letters being excluded from the GIF denominator, but included in the new numerator, they can often contain many citations. So that artificially boosts the impact factor for some subject areas, such as in biomedicine. In that field, you can have very substantial editorials and letters written that have several citations in them. So those would be included in the numerator, which would skew the result as opposed to other fields that don't uh, have the same editorial practices. So how do you find the impact factor? Uh, the journal publishers will often indicate on their website their GIF, but you do need to be aware of predatory journals and fake impact factors. Otherwise, you can obtain by contact you can obtain this information by contacting one of the librarians within the WHA Virtual Library. We have access to the journal citation reports. It's paid through the University of Manitoba, and we have access to that. We can also access it through the Web of Science, which is another U of M subscription. So the journal citation report covers scholarly journals for science and social sciences, but it's restricted to the content provided in the Web of Science database. So this is another consideration that you need to keep in mind when using the journal citation report, the GIF. In other words, uh, what I mean by the content being provided solely in the Web of Science, a citation count in Web of Science indicates how many times that item was cited by other papers that are also in Web of Science. So the citation metrics for individual papers may be different based on which database you use. It's also known that the Web of Science has a geographic language bias as it leans towards publications from English speaking countries. So you need to be aware that you're limited to the pool of information from Web of Science, which is uh, generally English from English speaking countries, the publications. If you dig deeper into the Journal of Citation, uh, impact report, uh, I pulled up 
by category of gerontology a list of titles, uh, gerontology titles, and where the purple arrow is, you can see the journal impact factor is listed. So the GIF has been criticized for various limitations. I mentioned the first two already being the difference between the papers included in the numerator versus the denominator, and that the web of science is anglophone, has an anglophone bias. But there are other considerations as well. One of them being, you cannot make comparisons across disciplines or subject fields. And the reason for this, uh, what I mean by this is, uh, for instance, you could not compare cell biology to history. Uh, comparing impact factors across disciplines is meaningless. And this is, is, is results because of different levels and patterns of citation activity between journals in different fields. For example, if you have a high number of authors per article, you end up with generally a higher impact factor due to the fact that the authors are then citing their own work. So self-citing can skew impact factor. Again, in biomedicine, we usually have many authors to one paper as opposed to other subject fields. Social sciences tends to use books to disseminate information. So you have less inter-journal citation. Same thing happens in engineering where they publish in conference proceedings. Within a subject field, you can see variations in the total number of citations. For example, applied versus basic research fields. Applied journals will reference basic research, but the reverse usually doesn't happen. So as a result, basic research fields will have a higher impact factor. So basic medicine field will have a higher impact factor than those in the clinical fields. Again, JCR only uses information from Web of Science, which has covers social science journals, but it's a little bit lower coverage. If you have lower subject coverage, that means there are lower citation levels, which results in a lower impact factor in the social sciences. There's something known as the citation curve or the peak citation rate, and that varies for different disciplines. Again, cell biology will have most of its citations happen within a two-year window, but in economics or math, citations peak within a five-year window. So two-year citation window is not long enough in some fields to reach citation peak. An impact factor favors research where life cycle of data is short, such as in biology or chemistry, as opposed to more slowly developing ones, such as social sciences and management. Even within the subfields of a subject, such as nursing, there can be high variations of impact factors. This can be due to small versus large journal, general versus specialty journal. You re really can only compare journals that target the same reader segment. For instance, you can't really compare a general journal nursing, such as Nursing Outlook, versus a specialty journal, nephrology, as, uh, like nephrology nursing. Another consideration is a highly cited, a highly cited papers. Really, within a journal, the impact factor is generally inflated by one or two highly cited papers. The majority of the articles in a journal will not have the majority of the citations, and in some cases, none at all. So the calculation is a mean rather than a median. So this. I'd like to point out for that reason, you can't use the overall ranking of a journal to tell you the quality or significance of a single article within it. It's often skewed by one or two articles. Review articles are an example. Review articles are highly sought after and are highly cited, which inflates the impact factor for journals that publish mainly review articles. And then as one author put it, coined the term expert-based 
blockbusters are out there. He's referring to guidelines, precision statements, disease definitions. These will be widely, cite, wide, widely cited by members of a professional society, but are often not evidence-based. So all this, as Law and Lung put it, all this is to say that GIF is not a solely reliable present representation of a journal quality. The calculations are not most robust enough. But the GIF has remained the top indicator. But since GIF has arrived, several other met metrics have come on the market as well. Those being site source Elsevier, source normalized impact per paper, and SIMAGO, journal and country rank. Site score was created by Elsevier. It's fairly new. It came out in December 2016. The metrics are freely available. It's based, data is, comes from Scopus uh, rather than the Web of Science. And by some accounts, Scopus has doubled the number of index journals as compared to uh, the Web of Science. Uh, they boast that their calculations are transparent. Rather than a two-year calculation, they use a three-year calculation and they focus on peer-reviewed publications, such as articles, reviews, conference proceedings, uh, book chapters from serial titles, and data papers. So that is the calculation for the site score at the top of the page there. Simply stated, the site score 20, for 2016 equals citations over publications. Um, you can see the full calculation listed at the top there. I've included this image here as well, which I have contained for the University of Western Ontario uh, to just give you a, a visual description of what we're talking about there. So for the numerator, uh, the citations uh, of, for a 2016, Citation site score, you would be looking at citations 2015 to typically peer-reviewed publications in the source published from 2012 to 2014 over the denominator, which is B, uh, which is typically peer-reviewed publications in the source published in 2012-2014. I know that's a bit hard to follow verbally, so hopefully that uh, image there will will help you understand it. It's fairly basic arithmetic. So to find site score, there is the URL. Again, I've limited to geriatrics and gerontology. I now have a nice list of titles with the site score available to me. Source normalized impact per paper or SNP is another uh, calculation. Uh, that is the formula for it. Uh, simply stated, it's journal citation count per paper over the citation potential in its subject field. Uh, I tried to find more information to understand what this citation potential in its subject fields means. And from this citation here, Waltman 2013, I was able to find this formula. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't help me much. I'm not sure if it's going to help you much, but you can certainly check it out further in that citation, Waltman 2013. Otherwise, the source normalized impact per paper measures the impact of a paper within a subject field. It was created by Hink Moed at the Center for Science and Technology Studies. It as well is based on data from Scopus. What it's tried to do is correct for subject field differences. The impact of a single citation is given a higher value in subject areas where citations are less likely, for example, mathematics, as opposed to a subject area as medicine. That would receive a lower value as it has higher citations. This allows you to make direct comparisons of journals in different subject field. They also use three years of cited publication, and it includes the citations only from selected document types. 
articles, conference papers, conference papers, and reviews, unlike GIF, which includes citations from all sources and documents. To find the SNP, it's available at the CWTS Journal Indicators. And again, I've, bear, I've uh, selected geriatrics and gerontology, and you can see the SNP value there. Although these are different calculations, a lot of them have still have the same considerations or concerns as the impact factor. Journals that publish many review articles will still have a higher SNP value to those that do not. You can't use it to indicate the value of individual papers. Self-citations self are not accounted for in the SNP, but they do report them as a separate indicator. And it doesn't work well for journals with small numbers of publications. Uh, I should have mentioned they have a stability interval which indicates, uh, reflects the stability or reliability of an indicator. The wider the stability interval, the less reliable the indicator. The indicators are likely to fluctuate over time. And one of those reasons could be, as I was just saying, it doesn't work well for journals with small numbers of publications. Those will have a wide stability interval indicator. Also, if you have few highly cited publications, that will also skew the results and the, will be reflected in the stability indicator. It will be wider as it's less stable. So Thymago is the last one that I was going to talk about. Uh, that is the calculation there. It was developed and calculated it's calculated annually by Mago University of Granada, Spain, uh, came out in 2010, also based on Scopus data. The metric can be applied to journals, book series, and conference proceedings. What they've tried to do is they've incorporated the subject field, the quality and reputation of the journal, and to have an effect on the value of a citation. So what they've done, each citation received by a journal is assigned a weight based on the SJR of the citing journal. So a citation from a journal with a high SJR value is worth more than a citation from a journal with a low SJR value. The SJR normalizes the differences in citation behavior between subject fields so that you can do those comparisons. The higher the SDR value indicates the greater the journal the prestige. The SJR can be obtained from this URL here. I've pulled it up again, limiting it to geriatrics and gerontology, and you can see the SJR where I have the purple arrow. So those are just a few examples. There are definitely more alternatives that are out there. Impact per publication, eigenfactor, five, H5 index from Google Scholar. All this is to say, as quoted from Elsevier, the company Elsevier, it's impossible for one metric to serve all the necessary purposes. You really need to use a mix of quantitative and qualitative evaluation. And we did just that in the webinar that I did a few months ago, which was where do I publish? Publish. Uh, as a reminder, you should try to figure out whether the journal or publisher is well known, is the journal indexed in general or a subject specific database? Is the journal peer reviewed? Is the journal recommended by library colleagues? Have they published in it? Have, are they reading those papers or those articles or the journals, I should say? How long has the journal been around? But the most importantly, by going over these metrics, is the realization that you need to use a variety of journal metrics. 
these are the site references that I have if you'd like to delve into the subject in more in depth. But otherwise, I'm happy to entertain any questions. I didn't do a very good job of monitoring, I'm afraid, but uh, no questions at this point. Uh, what I was hoping to do was ensure that you have an idea what is an impact factor, how they came to be, and what they were intended for. Uh, we looked at several examples, the GIF, SiteScore, SNP, and SciMago. We looked at the many considerations and or criticism caveats about using these indices. And I leave you with the final note that you have to gather metrics from a variety of sources, both quantitative and qualitative, in order to get the most complete picture of a journal's impact factor. So seeing no questions, I'd like to thank you again for joining this session. Feel free to contact me at this email or call us on our at this phone number. And we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much and have a great day.